Dave, I'm close to placing an order for a twin turret uh, fixed head machine. But I've come here today and I've looked at this and I've thought to myself, actually, this is a little bit different. What, what would you say the advantages are for this machine and maybe how you can persuade me to go down this route? I would have said on this machine, your tool, your tool to tool time is so much quicker with the platen. You haven't got, plus you haven't got the mechanical movement of a turret. And, and this is a fixed head machine. We've got two spindles. How many tools have we got here? We've got two platens, but how many tools in total? We've got tool, two, two turrets. We've got 20 tools on the main spindle, 20 tools on the sub spindle, and on the main, on the main spindle we have a B-axis. So we've got a B-axis on the main spindle. Can that B-axis work on the back spindle or is it, it just can, the main spindle? Yeah, it can, you can work it on the, main, on the back spindle, but obviously if you're working on the back spindle, your, your main spindle is idle for that time. So I'm kind of wrestling here, as I said to you already, about the, the differences between a twin turret and a twin spindle and, and a sliding head lathe. Yep. Where, where, where does this machine fit in amongst all those sorts of models? Okay, I mean, the main thing about this machine, if you, if you go for this against the sliding head machine, is you don't have to use ground bar. That's a big with, thing. With all sliding heads, you have to use ground bar, which is more expensive. Uh, and the other advantage is you get a much a smaller bar end of your bar feeding. Okay, so less yeah. remnant, so less no ground bar, mm -hmm. and also your, the, the diameter, the max diameter here, I'm assuming is, is 42, is it? Two millimetres, yeah. yeah. 42, and we've got 40 tools, you say? 40 tools, yeah. Now, how, in amongst all these tools, we've got platens here for fixed tools, uh -huh. and obviously driven tools yeah. as well. What, what, what's the, uh, how many of each have we got? Okay, on the main spinner you've got five OD tools, you've got four um, boring tools, uh, internal drilling, Etc., and then you've got 12 driven tools with the B axis, which you can put at any angle. Then, looking inside the machine as well, it's, it's, it's quite an expanse of space, it's, it's quite, it's quite, it's, it's very ergonomical for loading, but it's also yeah. there's a lot of room in there, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that gives you obviously for the operator to be able to get in there, change tools safely, and and the different, any differences between the front spindle and the back spindle, or are they equal? Equal, equal. Same speeds, um, same bar capacity, and what same collets, so you don't have to have different collets for each spindle. And, and what about when we, when we start looking at the, what we can do on the, on the milling with the driven tools? Have we got much power there? Have we got much speed? Okay, the, the driven tools are up to 4,000 RPM. Obviously, you're not going to get as much as you get on a VMC, but for milling, cross holes, drilling, tapping, and, and in your opinion, having worked here uh, at Dugard on different types of solutions, you've got sliding head lathes, you've got fixed head lathes, yeah. is this, does this fit right in the middle for you? Is it a really good sort of hybrid? Yeah, yeah. I mean, most customers that buy these are running high capacity, so there's not a lot of setup time, but they love it because of the, the quick chip to chip time from the platens. And when I've looked at these machines before from yourselves, I mean, they've moved on a lot. I mean, let's, you look yeah. at the fascia on these machines. Is a, they, uh, they, yeah. I know looking, whether they're good looking or not, is, is kind of yeah. irrelevant in some yeah. ways, but they do look good. You have moved, uh, you've now got the fan yes. control. This yeah. is a big mm -hmm. thing because yeah. I know before you offered them with various controls, but yeah. this, this is yeah. a big thing because I mean, people like fanic. Mostly for the, mu for the UK market, fanic is obviously very popular. In the, in the Europe, it doesn't seem to be such an, an issue. With, with the Mitsubishi control, but certainly in Europe, in, in the UK, sorry. It's and, and how do you go about programming this? You've, you've got a demo running on here today, but h how do you go about programming? Is, is it all done offline? Is, is this control this, got this features pro in it? This program is actually done offline using SolidCam. Um, we, we work in partnership with SolidCam now. Um, they give us a lot of support. Plus, a lot of our suppliers seem to work with solid cam as well so it gives us a good synergy there and if you were going to interrogate this uh, the program on the machine yep. is, it, is it easy to do obviously with the plans yeah, yeah. to fix yeah them. yeah I mean it's, it's easy to go in there edit you've got background edit everything that you'd expect with a fan act really and do you think I mean another thing that I would probably would stand out to me and I said to you at the start of this interview about about to buy a twin turret machine for example uh -huh. is this is a lot smaller isn't it yeah, it's a lot print is very small for a, for a machine of this capacity with that many tools, yeah. yeah. And it's not just I'm talking about width, I'm talking about depth, I'm yeah. talking about height, the exactly. whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here, for you guys at Dugard, this is going to, I would say, the fact you've now got the fanic control on this, the fact that you can probably satisfy bigger bar capacities than a sliding head, a lot of sliding head yes. machines, uh, gives, gives you a bit of a niche, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, I don't think anybody else has got a machine similar to this in the UK.